Hello viewers. Today I am going to tell you something about a product which is a amazing one one of its kind product. This product is called the Sea Spires Launcher. As you can see it looks like a normal fire extinguisher but has certain additions to it. This is a product which can work like a regular fire extinguisher when required. It can also work as a suppression system or as on autopilot. What are the various components that go into the making of this particular product and how it works? Let me quickly tell you something about that. It's always best to know your product uh, when you know that you need to use it. So as you can see, this product has a cylinder which is the agent cylinder. This agent cylinder is made up of uh, my steel and it any fire extinguisher will contain certain things certain components within the cylinder and some of them which are outside so let I'll define them or I'll describe them as internal components and external components so let me talk about the internal components and then I'll come back to the external components this cylinder consists or contains within itself a agent which is the powder map as you can see the base of the cylinder also is blue which denotes it's a powder and as you can see over here it says it's ABC powder or MAP90. Now apart from that it also contains dry nitrogen as a propellant at 15 bar. The agent needs to be thrown out of the cylinder when the cylinder is activated and therefore you need a dip tube. So this is what a dip tube would look like. It is attached precisely to the valve in such a manner that at least 90% of the agent is thrown out when the system is activated. So this is, these are the internal components of this particular product. Now let us look at the external components. In the external components, I've already told you this is a mild steel body. Uh, it has a specialized valve. Now this specialized valve which is on the neck of this cylinder it is specialized because it has dual function. One, it has to ensure that when the squeeze grip is pressed, then the agent is thrown out such that it comes into the hose. Second, when the system works automatically, then the valve should allow the agent to come out of the nozzles that you can see over here. It is a state of heart pressure gauge. And as you see here, it has a red zone, a green zone and the red zone. The green zone is the zone on which the needle should be for this extinguisher to be deemed workable or to say that you can use this extinguisher and put the fire out. Then you can see here attached to this is the squeeze grip. It is a stainless steel squeeze grip. The work of this squeeze grip is that when you press it, it should activate the system and allow the agent to get thrown out from the Host, through the hose pipe. The other action is that you can actually lift the system using this so it also acts like a handle. To come back here, the uh, uh, system does not get activated accidentally. There is a safety pin which is also here. So if you could look at it here, there is a lock at the end of the safety pin and all you need to do is put your finger into this round circle of the safety pin and tug gently. The lock gets broken and the pin can be removed and from that point onwards squeeze grip can be pressed. When pressed it activates the cylinder, the valve opens allowing the agent to be thrown out from the hose. So I've been talking about the hose. This is an EPDM rubber hose uh, pipe which is flexible and which remains sturdy and strong throughout the life of the cylinder. It does not crack or break easily. Now here we have holding this hose to the valve or to the cylinder at one end and also at the other end holding the nozzle of fire extinguisher to the hose. You can see two steel like clamps which are known as ferrules. The job of the ferrules is to ensure that the hose pipe is tightly held here 
at the uh, space when it is attached to the cylinder and the nozzle is attached firmly to the hose pipe as well. The nozzle as you can see is a special nozzle which is meant to work with the powder map. As I did tell you initially that here this is the base. This base is blue in color. The base allows the fire extinguisher to be placed at any place in a steady manner. It does not topple over. It is blue in color denoting powder and you can see which kind of powder by looking at the instruction label. The instruction label by itself denotes a number of things. One, it tells you the type of fire extinguisher, the size, the rating. That means the capability of this size of fire extinguisher of the agent map to fight a given size of fire. Then it gives you instructions on how to use the uh, cylinder in its manual mode and that it will also work in the automatic mode. This tells you the different types of fires that it can fight that is class A, B, C and electrically started fires. On the side here are mentioned the um, global and Indian certifications that the extinguisher may have. On the other side here you can see you have the detail of the product. It tells you certain features of the product like the working pressure, the um, propellant gas is nitrogen and its gross weight amongst others. It gives you instructions on maintenance and the precautions that you should take when using this fire extinguisher. You also have a small label here which tells you that while using it in the manual mode you must keep it in the vertical position. Now viewers you heard me saying while using it in the manual mode this particular fire extinguisher can be worked on or can be used both manually as well as automatically. What makes it so special? Well on either sides of the valve you can see these cages or these protective caps. Now inside this you will see that there is a sprinkler nozzle which has housed inside a diethyl glycol bulb, glass bulb or a quadzoid bulb. Now let's assume that this cylinder is kept near a place where there's a risk of fire. Nobody is there in the vicinity and a fire starts. There is nobody to pick up the cylinder and use it manually. So all I needed to do was pick up the cylinder after removing the checking the uh, whether the cylinder is charged that means the needle is on green removing the pin taking out the so this is how I would pick it up I would take out the hose from the holder and I would with a sweeping action at the base of the fire put the fire out if it was in the manual mode now let us look at the automatic mode in the automatic mode, when the temperature reaches, the ambient temperature because of the fire reaches 68 degrees or above, the diethyl glycol within the glass bulb here, it expands, the glass bulb breaks, opens the valve and the agent is thrown out on this sprinkler nozzle and is thrown on to the fire on either sides because as you can see there are two such nozzles one on each side of the valve so this works in the automated mode as well now there's another way in which this particular extinguisher can be used let's say there's a fire in the room and you need to uh, go and fight the fire but the fire at right at the start of the room is quite big or somebody is trapped inside the room you cannot go close to the fire because the fire is big. So all you need to do is lift up this extinguisher and roll it into the fire. As you throw it or roll it into the fire, this extinguisher sensing the heat of 68 degrees or more, the same automated method comes into play. The diethyl glycol expands, breaking the glass while 
and allowing the agent to be spread out from both the nozzles thereby putting out the fire or at least subduing it so that fire fighting can happen now in such a position when it is being rolled into the fire the cylinder is no longer in a vertical position it is probably in a you know a horizontal position this cylinder this fire extinguisher has a specialized dip tube which works when it is also uh, you know rolling or it is in a, a horizontal position allowing at least 90% of the agent to be thrown out so my friends here we have a product which is one of its kind which allows you to use it as a manual system or a suppressing system as and when required